A few weeks ago, the current world number 18 golfer, Billy Horschel, claimed that many former PGA Tour stars who had chosen to join the Live Golf were misled by their agents. While that may sound shocking, we believe there is more to this claim. How could professional golfers have fallen so cheaply to misinformation from their agents? Well, just before the start of the 2022 PGA Championship, Billy Horschel claimed that the Live Golf players had been convinced that joining the Live Golf would not hinder their participation in the PGA Tour. According to the 2018 Zurich Classic of New Orleans winner, the Live Golf organizers also lured the PGA Tour players into the Saudi-backed league by reassuring them that their position on other tours would never be compromised. He said, quote, It's quite clear that Live convinced those golfers that they would not be suspended from the PGA or the DP World Tour. Live had informed the guys that they had already looked into it, and should any problem happen, they were willing to sue. It is naive for them to believe things would happen that way, end quote. However, we all know how that's going. So far, several top golfers who moved to live golf have lost their places on the PGA Tour, and the bad news just keeps coming. Welcome to Golf Links. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more updates on new video drops. According to Billy Horschel, some live golfers and agents are hypocrites. He claimed that aside from being misled by agents who knowingly withheld vital information, all the defactors and their brokers were mostly led by the easy money that would come their way. To the English golfer, the agents saw the opportunity to cash in on the money and most of the players never bothered to find out the truth. Billy Horschel revealed that he knew a player who regretted listening to his agent. The PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan is also still in the business of suspending the defectors from participating in any PGA Tour events. Following the PGA suspension of live defectors, the DP World Tour didn't hesitate to do the same. It also announced, a few days later, that all of its players who participated in the Live's debut event were suspended for three events on the DP World Tours. According to a London Times report, the European Tour was also going to add further sanctions, which would include a $120,000 fine on each of the players. Not happy with the decision, the affected Live players sought the assistance of an arbitration arbitration judge who had since halted any sanction against the Live Tour players by the DP World Tour, including the fines against them. While this may be a win to players of Live Golf, we still don't know what fate lies ahead of them on the DP World Tour. As far as the former European Tour is concerned, the Live Golf players will find out about their status during a substantial court hearing by February 2023. However, as far as the PGA Tour is concerned, the Live and some of its players are still in a huge crisis against the PGA Tour. For all we care, the situation is currently in the PGA Tour's favor. In August, a U.S. District Court hearing filed a motion for a restraining order against the PGA Tour by Live Golfers Hudson Swafford, Matt Jones and Taylor Gooch dismissed the suit against the American Base Tour. The trio who would have participated in the 2022 FedEx Cup were barred from doing so. They had approached the court hoping to rescind the decision of the PGA Tour. The players claimed that the suspension had caused them a lot of damage. That may never be corrected. However, Judge Beth Labson sided with the PGA Tour instead, and the players were definitely not pleased with this judgment. Unfortunately, they could do nothing about it. Unlike the DPA World Tour, the substantive antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour will not enjoy a formal hearing until January 2024. That's a long time, and a lot is going to happen before then. The suit, which originally had 11 players and the Live Golf, had suffered a huge setback, with eight players, including Phil Mickelson, Wilson, Taylor Gooch, Hudson Swafford, and Ian Poulter already withdrawing from the suit. At the moment, only Matt Jones, Peter Uline, and Bryson DeChambeau are the players still in the legal battle, according to the Live Golf. According to Phil Mickelson, who had only recently withdrawn from the lawsuit despite being one of the major scouts for Live Golf, there was no reason to remain in the legal tussle since Live Golf itself had already joined the suit. I believe it is important that the golfers have the right and privilege to play where and when they desire. They also have the right to partake in any competition they have qualified for. Since we have the Live on the suit, the players can get that privilege if the Live wins, said Phil Mickelson. According to Live Golf, the Saudi backed series would seek retributive damages for actions taken to ruin the new league's prospective business alliances. 
During the 2022 Tour Championship, while announcing major modifications to the PGA Tour, which would see the introduction of new events and better payouts for top and fringe players, the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan was asked if the Live Golf defectors may return if they had a change of heart. Without much thought, Jay Monahan simply said no. He added, quote, they have chosen to join the Live Golf series and therefore have chosen to commit to it. For most all of them, they have decided to sign long-term deals with the league. As I've remained clear all this while, every player has every right to their choice, and I will always respect that choice. But they have chosen to make it, and we've also made ours. As far as we care, we will continue to concentrate on the things we can control and keep getting stronger. I believe they already understand that." End quote. Jay Monahan, who wasn't holding back, also claimed that if the live golfers were concerned about hopping over a line they had drawn in the sand, they shouldn't have bothered drawing one in the first instance instance. Quote, as it involves the likely scenario of a comeback for any live golf players, let me remind you that we are presently in the middle of a lawsuit. They have decided to sue us, so discussing any possible instance at this juncture does not make much sense. End quote. Do you know the saying that people don't remain friends after a court case? Well, Jay made it clear that there's no coming back from that move. Another major source of concern for live golfers has been the lack of world ranking points. Lamenting the ordeals of the live golfers, Cameron Smith, who had now slipped from his initial second spot on the log to third, said, quote, It is a big shame that we are not being given world ranking points out here. We have 48 world-class golfers playing, and not being allocated world ranking points is a little unfair. I sincerely hope that these world ranking points will somehow sort themselves out before my exemption elapses, end quote. The situation for the live golfers has gotten so terrible that Paul Dunn, who previously held the 65th spot, has slumped into a shocking 1,435th spot in the world rankings. Justin Thomas, who didn't seem to feel sorry for the live golfers, believed that they had it coming for them. Quote, I don't seem to understand. Isn't it very obvious and written right in front of them? They only want what is favorable for them. They decided to go there themselves. I understand that if I were in the same situation, I would wish for it. But that doesn't say it is the right thing. End quote. In an interesting turn of events, live golf, in a desperate attempt to get its golfers the world ranking points entered into a partnership with the less known Middle East and North Africa Tour. Since MENA Tour enjoys recognition from the official world golf ranking OGWR, the collaboration with the Live Golf Series will see the Saudi-backed league's Invitational Series become part of the MENA Tour. Meanwhile, all 48 Live players who competed at the Rich Harvest Farms outside Chicago had signed a letter dated September 16th, hoping to convince the chairman of the official world golf ranking ranking Peter Dawson to grant world ranking points to golfers on the Rebel Golf Series. However, the OWGR on the 6th of October of 2022 noted that it had received notice of major reform in the MENA Tour Series, but insisted that the Live Golf's next two events in Jeddah and Bangkok will not see the award of ranking points. The OWGR in its statement claimed that it had received short notice for the possible granting of points for Live Golfers, a significant part of the statement reads, quote, OWGR observes that the first two competitions in the Invitational Series appear to be equivalent to the Live Golf Invitational Series events in Jeddah and Bangkok. The communique from Mina Tour contained a starting field document for the Bangkok contest, affirming that to be the case. In essence, there's a review underway noting the changes in the Mina Tour. However, a notice of these modifications as given by the Mina Tour is unsatisfactory to allow OWGR to conduct an appropriate review ahead of the live event. End quote. The press release from the OWGR would go on to insist that only upon the completion of its review will it decide to award points to the new MENA Tours competitions. Surprisingly, the MENA had previously remained inactive since the global pandemic outbreak, making its newfound romance with the Live series rather intriguing. It'll be interesting to see what the outcome of the OWGR review will be. 